Um, so, so I want to remind you, today we, we started our week two in Won't You Be My Neighbor? And we're going to be learning today, we're going to be discussing this, how to love God and love people with our time. And I want to remind you that last week we talked about this. And if you weren't here last week, you can always watch the sermon um, on, uh, on YouTube. And then also you can follow along with your Bible notes on the Bible app and you can follow along with the sermon. So, so one of the things we talked about was the great commandment. What is the great commandment? The great commandment is to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, to love your neighbor as yourself. You're not going to be able to love your neighbor or yourself if you're not in love with God, if you're not spending time with them. And that is the great commandment. Last week we talked about this, this, this person what was, was trying to trick Jesus into getting him to answer that question of who is my neighbor? What, what is the greatest commandment? And I love how Jesus always flipped it back on the person. Even though they knew the Bible, he wanted to make sure that they would answer accordingly to what it was. And he always has us looking and searching for the answer as we look in that. So those, the, the great commandment, you can find it in Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 28. And, and as Christ followers, this is the goal of this series. As Christ followers, as people that love Jesus, that have surrendered their life to Christ, our goal throughout this series is that we can show people and we can tell people that they are loved, but also reminding them that they're capable of loving others. Why? Because when we connect them to the greatest love that there is, when we are connected to the greatest love that there is, we can love anybody. It doesn't matter where they are, who they are, what they've done, or where they come from. And so I want to remind you that. I want to remind you that, that we are called to go and make disciples. We are called to go love our neighbor. We are called to go and share the great news of Jesus Christ. But, but here's the thing, though. When it comes to that, it takes time out of our weeks. How many of y'all would say you're a busy person? Oh, come on, we're in church. Y'all lying already? Come on, who's a busy person in here? Right? I see some teachers in here. I know y'all busy. Some of y'all double, double uh, raise y'all's hands twice. So that means y'all super, super busy, right? So, so how many of us would say, man, I just feel like I don't have enough time? How, how many of us would say, I just feel like, my, man, I, it's like I blink and it's already Friday and I'm already having to get ready for the next following week of work. Or uh, I blink and I'm again in front, of, in front of Pastor Mario on Sunday. Like it just, it just happens so fast. And, and what happens is that we, we get so busy, we get so caught up in what's going on around us, and that's the culture, that's how the culture has made us to where we always think that the busier that we are, the, the, the more we are accomplishing. I remember as a little kid, I lived off of Runnels here in Diamond Hill. Uh, um, the paletero man, um, I don't know, I guess maybe it's the Mexican me or something, but I can hear the paletero man about two blocks away, right? You could be inside playing your PlayStation, and for some reason, that little bell was like amplified, and you can hear it. You could be cutting the lawn, and all of a sudden, it's like, man, something's, hold on, something's wrong, right? You're like, uh, what is it called, that, that bear that tries to uh, uh, turn off the fires? I forgot his name. Smokey the bear, the disturbance in the forest, right? Like, you know, like, it's like, what's going on? And I remember, like, as a kid, when, when I would go, and I would be, my dad would tell me, hey, cut the yard, or I would be inside, or I would go and play, I would be on the bikes playing with my neighbor friends. I remember we would stop everything. We would, like, jump off the bike, and the bike would go one way, and you start running after the paletero man. Right, and then, it, you know, you whistle at them, right, trying to get the, hey, and the dude's like on a bike and he turns back, right? You, 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 I remember everything would stop. Even my friends that were playing inside, they were playing the, their toys or whatever, they would come outside and it would bring us all together, right? And next thing you know, you had all these like chicloso, sticky kids smelling like doggy, right? Like just all sweaty. And, and what would they do? Just be all surrounded the paleta man and the dude, he's just counting, right? Because he's like, oh, I'm about to make me some money here. And they were a dollar at the time, maybe even less than that. Now I don't know, they have two bucks. But, but yet, I remember standing there and whenever uh, getting a paleta and everybody would get their little flavors and, and you'd be like, oh, man, no, mine tastes better. And then we would sit on the curb and we would just be in there like with your legs open, right, because you didn't want it to drip on you. And we, that, I, I remember those days where we would just talk. Yes, we were kids, but it's like we, we would just spend time talking. And then I would see my dad or other family members from other houses getting to, hey, Vecino, how you doing? How's it going? Man, your grass is looking green. Oh, I see that you're working on your house. And oh, how's the kids? How's the family? Next thing you know, like people are gathering together. And I think what happens is as believers, we, 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 we want to think like a believer, like a Christian, a follower of Christ, but we want to still look like the world, busy. We, we want to look like 
man, I, I'm following after Jesus, but yet there's a lot of things in our lives that make us busy. For instance, I'm going to give you another example. Yesterday, we were invited to go to a birthday party. I'm like, we're going to the birthday party. Get in the truck. Let's go. Get your stuff. Let's go. And I put it in reverse, run a little behind, right, because we're, we're used to chaos. I don't know why, right? And I put it in reverse, and next thing you know, I just see my, my mirror Boom, it just starts facing the other way. And I was like, what just happened? I hit my mirror on the basketball goal that we have at our house. And I felt like God was just like, here you are about to preach on this tomorrow, and you're rushing yourself. And God was kind of like, take a breather, relax. It's going to be okay. You're going to get there in time. It's okay. You're, you're there with your two sons in the truck. Spend some time with them. Enjoy that time. Right? And then your phone goes off, your watch goes off and says, be mindful, take a breather. Breathe deeply, right? You try, all this stuff happens, right? Like, it's just crazy on how God just speaks to us when he really wants to get our attention. And so I hope that today as we, we look deeper into what does it mean to be somebody, a neighbor who loves God, loves people with our time. Time is valuable. Time is valuable. And, and I'm probably going to make somebody go into a panic attack mode right now, but let me tell you how valuable time is. Check this out. One second was just wasted. Two seconds. Some of you are like, man, he's wasting my time just getting me here. It's three seconds. Some of you are probably shaking y'all's leg right now like this, like, come on, let's go. Right? And I want you to understand is that the world wants us to see as like, man, you got to be in a hurry. You always got to be doing things. You always got to be saying stuff. You always got to go visit people. You always got to always, 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 always. And then what happens? You end up like me talking really, really fast because you're trying to get a bunch of words into 30 minutes. Right? And that's how our lives look. But I want to tell you that God, Jesus gives us a perfect example on what does it look like to, to take a breather to step back and look at the bigger picture, to be able to walk in the will of the Father. And so as you think about that, I want you to be thinking, how am I spending my time weekly? How am I wasting my time weekly? Is it through social media? Is it, is it just things that just, maybe they stress you out that you can say, I need to put those to the side, and I need to find a time that I can invest, and I can put that when it's time for me to do those things. I want you to think about that. So I, I want to also remind you is this, is you're not wasting your time. I believe that you're at the right place at the right time at the right moment. And you're doing is you're taking the opportunity of today to learn more, to learn more on how to live a life in the will of God. So I want to read to you this scripture. It's in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 17. And this is what it says. It says, look carefully. Then how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So, so here the writer who is Paul, he, he's, he's explaining and he's talking about time. And, and what I like what he's doing is he, he does this in these two verses, the very first two verses, he says, hey, I want you to think about this. Be careful. Look carefully in how you walk. And he's not telling you, hey, look down at your two feet and make sure you don't trip. What he's saying goes, be careful in the manner and in the way that you live your life. He goes, pay attention to that. Be mindful of what you put yourself into. Be mindful where you set your mind to. Be mindful on where, where you think God is leading you. And be mindful if that is chaos. Be mindful if that's where God really wants you. And he's saying, look at your life. And so I ask you at this moment to reflect on your life. Reflect on, on your life today. Where is it that you are? Where is it that you might say, man, I really need to redirect my mind in this way. And he goes, not as unwise, but as wise. What I love about this is that Paul is telling us this. He goes, what I want you to know is that because you now look at your life different, don't be unwise like the world. Don't be unwise and think that you have to be catching up with everybody else. He says, be wise about it. Use your time wisely. He says, look at your life and use your time wisely. But because many of us as believers, we know the truth. We know the truth that we have been saved, we have been redeemed, that I am no longer who I used to be, but I am who God and Christ says I am today. And because of that, my life should look different. Because of that, I should live my life different. Because of that, I should spend my life, my time, and my life differently.
different. That, that is what we should see. But if you notice, he doesn't say, hey, uh, be wise in making the best use of your time or of time. He says of the time. And what Paul is getting us to understand here is he wants us to, he's very specific. He's like, I'm not talking about what you think is important. I'm not talking about what gets thrown on your desk. I'm not talking about what comes up an issue in your life. He says, but of the time. And that time that Paul is talking about is the time that God gives you. You, you know, that, that's the thing about time is that time is so valuable that once you spend it, once you waste it, whatever way it is, you can't get it back. You, you can't get it back. And Paul's saying, look, be mindful. Look at your life. Pay attention. Don't be unwise, but be wise. And use the time that you have been given to what? To walk in a manner that glorifies God. Use your time wisely. So here, here's the thing is this, is that the word that, in some of the translations, what the word that's used there is to redeem your time. To redeem your time. Regain your time. How do you regain your time, Pastor Mar? You just said that once I lose it, it's gone. How do I regain it? I regain it by doing the will of the Father, by living in his will, by living in his presence, by, by, by spending time with him is how I regain because my mind is now refocused in glorifying him. So, so how do I continue to do that? We have to find a rhythm. All right, you have to find a rhythm. It says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses, verse 10, it says, For we are his workmanship, created in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And so here, as Paul is saying, the time, we have to understand that God has given us opportunities. Some of us, we want to say, oh, no, man, I, I'm just living in the moment, right? How many of us, we ever said that, like, oh, I'm just living in the moment, you know, uh, we used to say YOLO back, right? Or maybe it's still said, but right? We said we only live once. I'm living in the moment. I'm only going to do this. It's all right. But, but that's not the way Paul wants us to see our lives. He's saying there's opportunities that you are given. And, and here's the thing is uh, we have to be good stewards of that time because the time we don't own. See, we, we have this mindset thinking that we own time, that, that I wake up in the morning and I got 24 hours to do what I want. That is wrong. We don't own time. Time is, is in, in God's hands. Now, now, I want you to think about this. Um, whenever your, your children, right, my son, my, my oldest son does this sometimes, but he'll pour himself a bowl of cereal, and he'll eat just the cereal, and what does he do? Leave the milk. And then my little one, my middle one's now starting to do that. So what do you tell them? Hey, why are you wasting the milk? Drink the milk. Right? But whenever I was a kid, I, I was doing the same thing. I didn't care. Right? Because I wasn't paying for it. My mom's probably like, oh, see, okay, okay, I got you after service. <laughs> but see, because I didn't pay for the milk, it was no value to me. Be because I didn't care to, to worry about, oh, let me dump it out. I was like, you know what? And sometimes we would dump it out, right? So the mom, your mom or your parents could think that you drank it on. They would be proud of you. And, and again, we're being wasteful. And for some of us, when we think of our time, what happens is because we don't own time, we not control time, we want to use it in whatever manner that we want. And what God wants us to do with the time that he has given us, the opportunities that he gives us, it's either with your family, with your neighbors, what he wants us to do is take that opportunity to live a life that glorifies him because in the time, in those opportunities, he will use you for his glory. But we have to make our lives and our times available for him. He says, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand that the will of the, um, what the Lord of the will, what the will of the Lord is. And I want to remind you that is that we are unfoolish when we think we're trying to do something and we're just wasting our time. We're being unfoolish with that. So you're probably like, okay, Pastor Mario, well, what does that mean? How does that even work for me to love my neighbor? How do I love God and love people with my time? See, some of us, what, what happens is this, is that we feel like we are wasting our time because we came to church. We feel like we're wasting our time because we had to serve at church. We, some of us, we feel like we wasted our time because Pastor Mario said that we've got to go to these wave groups with actually you can scan the barcode that's in front of you. We would love for you to attend a group. 
honestly, it's going to be awesome. I'm excited for you to be a part of a group and see you grow in your faith. And so you could do that at this time if you'd like. There was just a little link out there. But for some of you, it's like, oh, man, here you go. He already wants me to do more things. I'm about to waste my time. That's all it is. It's going to be me meeting on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and he's going to, I'm just going to be wasting my time. Uh, that's all it is. No, but if we see it as the opportunity that you get to grow in your relationships, that you get to grow deeper in your faith, that you get to be a part of what God is doing in your life and walking in faithfulness and obedience, you're not wasting your time. You're not. You're not wasting your time. Jesus would do this in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. It says this, And rising very early in the morning... While it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. In the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you see where Jesus would separate himself from what the world wanted him to be busy. Think about it. I mean, people knew that Jesus was healing people. I want you to think about that. Like, people knew Jesus was in town, he's walking around, he's laying hands, he's spitting on people's face, and they are being healed. Like, you don't think people were like, hey, come on, come over here, come to my house, come and do this, come and do this, come and do this. And Jesus would say, you know what, I'm going to have to create a rhythm. I have a rhythm where I have to spend time with the Father, so I'm going to separate myself early in the morning when I know that I can just concentrate and really hear the will of the Father. And for some of us, we, we, we want to get in the middle of that busyness thinking that we are really being, accomplishing something, but we're really not. Take the time to separate yourself, to spend time with the Father. Why? Because, again, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, right? And love your neighbor as yourself. When you spend time with the Father, you learn how to live in his love. You learn how to live in his mercy. You learn how to wake up that morning and walk in his presence, knowing that he is leading you and he is guiding you in order for you to glorify him with your life. Here's another thing is that love and busyness do not go together. They don't. You can't love somebody and, 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 and be busy at the same time. You, you just can't. You, I mean, you can work together and do things together, right? But you can't try to love somebody and be busy. And I believe that this is why sometimes relationships are broken. Marriages start falling apart. Yes, relationships start breaking apart. Friendships, because we think that we are really investing in each other. We think that we have really put time aside for each other. But in reality, we have gotten caught up in the chaos where we now are afraid to stop and say, hey, we got we to reset. We got to refocus. And maybe I want to I want to encourage you with you with uh, I want to encourage you with this today. Spend time with the Father, husbands. Spend time with the Father so that you can love your wife the way you need to love her, the way God can love her through you, not the way you do it, but the way He needs to do it. Wives, spend time with the Father so that whenever your husband messes up and doesn't do something that isn't right, you can say, man, you know what? I, I have mercy and I have grace, and because of that, I can, I can still show grace to my husband. I can still show grace to my kids. I can still show grace to everybody that's around me. And this is the thing is that when both of us do it, if you're single, married, looking, searching, whatever it is, when you spend time with the Father... When you spend time with the Father, you start to understand and you start to hear his will. And you say, I know where I'm going. I know where God has taken me. And you walk with the confidence knowing that God is guiding you and he's speaking to you. So that whenever you see the neighbor, if it's neighbors, everybody. I'm, I'm talking about you. You're like, oh, he's talking about marriage. No, that's your neighbor. Your physical neighbor, the ones that are around you, those are your neighbors. The ones that are sitting next to you, across from you, those are your neighbors. And so now what happens is because we spend time with the Father, and we learn how to love the Father with all our heart, soul, and mind, and we love our neighbor as ourselves, now we can go across the room and say, hey, how you doing? My name is Mario, and my favorite, favorite uh, flavor paleta is coconut. And there is no shame, and you're not worried about, oh, what are they going to think? No, because we love each other. God wants us to be unified, and the only way we can be unified is in him. There is no other way but in him. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7, many of us, when we read this, you probably heard this at a wedding. But man, it's, it's outside of that. This is a responsibility that we have as individuals. It says this, love is patient. 
I'm impatient, okay? I'm just letting you know. And kind. Hey, sometimes we might not be kind with our words. Love does not envy or boast. We don't say that, hey, well, I did this and you didn't do that. Or, man, I'm just jealous of you because you're doing this and I'm not. Love doesn't do that. It isn't arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. When we love somebody, it's not about our gain. It's about the gain of the king. It's about the gain gaining of the kingdom of God, advancing in our neighborhoods, advancing in our homes, advancing in the church. It's not about our gain or our own way. It's not about irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing. Man, how many of us, when we get somebody back, we're like, I got him. Oh, some laughter in here. So I'm, I'm thinking we, we've done that a couple of times this week. Right? Man, I got him back. I made him feel this way. I made him feel a certain way. And here's the thing is if you're hearing this and you're like, yes, this is for me. Uh, it, it, yes, that person did me wrong. Hey, focus on yourself. Go back to the presence of the Father so that he can lead you through your hurt, so that he can meet your need. And it says, it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. Oh, man, that one's hard for a lot of us. Because the truth that we try to live in is the truth that we want to understand. It's the truth that benefits us. But the truth here, if you really know the kingdom of God, it's not self-centered. It's not selfish. It's selfless. It becomes more about God than it becomes about me. This is how we love one another. It says love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. So if you're struggling today, if you're in the presence of the Father in his love, you're able to love him with all your heart, soul, and mind because you have put him first. Your priorities have been redirected. They have been reorganized, right? For some of us, what happens is this, is that our priorities are things that are not of God. But yet, how do we know what our priorities are? Because Jesus says, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. So that's your priority number one. Second is what? Oh, we're not listening. Love who? Love your neighbor. So that's it. Those are the two. If you have anything above that, I'm sorry to tell you, you're wrong. Your life is not in the way to glorify God. If your kids are above loving God, if number one was like, oh, it's my kids and it's my daughter, it's my son, it's my husband, it's my money, it's my cars, it's, you're wrong. And this is why sometimes it becomes so hard to love our neighbor the way God has called us to love him. Because we make it about the things that we want. But if we are living in his truth, we say, okay, it's about loving God above everything else. What does that mean? A life that is surrendered to him. A life that glorifies him. A life that it's all about him. And the second thing is to love my neighbor. Okay, so it's not about me all the time. I need to be first loving my neighbor. Because then in there, you can live an, a life that is in truth. Love God. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. In other ways, you've heard is love God, love people. That's how we do that. So last week what we did, and I'm about to close it out. Last week what we did is we looked at the story of the Samaritan. Right? We did. We looked at the story of the Samaritan. So I want to I want to kind of point some things out. So it's like, how do I love God and my neighbor in a manner that glorifies God? So when we look at the Samaritan, what happens is remember there was a there was a victim. He got jumped. The, they, they took his stuff. The, the religious people stepped over them pretty much. But then the good Samaritan, which is Jesus, came to his rescue. That's where the whole, the whole uh, what the story that Jesus was trying to get us to understand. But there's something that the, the, the good Samaritan does. is this, that he shows compassion to that victim. And, and I want to tell you, this is how you love your neighbor, friends. Church, this is how you love your neighbor, is that you show compassion and this is what you do is you have compassion for them and you put yourself in their place. And you say, you know what? I might not understand what you're going through, but I'm going to be here and I'm going to listen to you. And I'm going to have compassion. Because you know what? Like, I really want you to experience the love and the mercy of God. I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be walking with you. The second thing is this. He made a connection. The good Samaritan, he or she made a connection, right? He, I say he or she in here, you or you can make a connection with that person. What does that look like? Put yourself alongside of them. It does take time. Find those moments where you can meet them at Starbucks or wherever it is at your office or at 6 o'clock in the morning at, at, at some office, wherever it is. Walk alongside of them. Connect with them where they are. Show compassion. Connect with them. Another one is this. is The, the Good Samaritan cared for 
that victim. So how do I care for them, Pastor Mario? I'm not saying buy and meet their needs. What I'm saying is you can, if you can meet their needs, praise God. And if you can't, connect them to resources so that they can be blessed through that. Connect them to resources and care for them. Love on them. And the last thing is this, and this is what's hard for many of us. It's cost. It's going to cost us something. What is that? It's going to cost us our time. I, I heard this said, and I'm going to quote it. I, I don't know who said it, but I'm going I'm to act like it's mine. All right, don't, don't you dare go telling people. A ministry that costs nothing achieves nothing. I want you to think about that. If you're living a life that really is not costing you anything and, and you're not really, like, you feel like, man, there's not, like, I don't feel like, like, you know, like God is, like, really testing me right now and really challenging me. If that's not really, if that's where you're at right now, it's probably because the ministry that you're trying to do, it's, it's all about you. It's become self-centered. It's become centered focused on, on you. If it's not costing you anything, you're not going to achieve anything. And we have been called to go and make disciples of all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we do that by loving God, loving people, and loving ourselves in that. But we have to make it about him above everything else. So what I want to do is I want to leave you with some action steps, okay? The first one is this. It's very easy. Y'all ready to be challenged? All right, some of you are like, yeah, I don't know. The first one is really easy. Get yourself a paleta after service and talk to somebody you don't know. That's simple. Now, you can't say you don't have time because you're already here. Amen? All right. Y'all didn't know I was going to do that one. But I want to I say this. is Another thing is spend time with God and ask him to lead you to others. God, I, I want you to open up time. Not that you, you're going to have 30 hours in one day, but hey, let me take out whatever isn't of you, whatever I'm trying to spend time in that is not of you, let me put that to the side so that I can spend time with people. Lead me to them, Father. Walk around your neighborhood. I know some of y'all like to walk. Walk around your neighborhood. Maybe this is the first time you're going to get out of your house in the evening. Walk around your neighborhood or even at your job. If you have cubicles, walk around the cubicles and just, you don't even need to say anything. Just be praying. Man, I'm going to pray for her. I don't know what she's going through, but, but you know what, God, you do. And I just ask if you want me, to, if you want to use me to, to lead them to you or just to pray for them, man, open up those doors. Man, I'm going to pray for him. Man, he's hammering that, that nail pretty hard. It looks like he's mad. He must be having some issues. But God, only you know him, and I can't meet his need. But if, if you want to use me, open up my mouth, connect me. Maybe it's whenever I'm going to go get a torta at lunch break, and, and I'm going to cross paths with them, and that's how you want me to be used, God. Whatever it is, go walking around your neighbor, and you say, I'm going to pray for whoever lives in this household, 3305 Runnels. I'm going to pray for their family to know who Jesus is. If they have financial situations that they are met, whatever is spiritual attacks, whatever they're going through, Father, I lift up that house in the name of Jesus. You have that power. You have that power to walk in that confidence that you can do that. Now, yes, some people might look at you crazy. I'm not saying you have to go and do all this crazy. You can walk and just be like, man, God, I just pray for this block right here. I pray for Elm Street. Oh, I pray for Elm Street that these homes, that these homes on this block not get to just experience a building that's white, but that they get to experience your kingdom in a different way. That they get to see you at work because it is only you who will free them. It is only you who will take them to salvation. That they find hope in you above everything else. And guess what we just did, church? We just prayed for Elm Street. It's that easy. Take the time to pray for people. That is the best way that you can love people. Take the time to say, this is not important no more because I have two priorities, to love God and to love people. And that is what I'm going to do. That is how I'm going to live. The last thing is this, is invite somebody to come and sit with you at church. You don't understand that majority of our connect cards that come in, the, the connect cards that we ask you week after week to fill out, right, those connect cards majority, 90% of those cards, they say a family member or a friend invited me. That is the power of you loving God and loving people that you're living in that. You're taking the time to say, hey, I'm glad. I would be so glad if you came and you sat with me at church. And so I hope that as last week and this week that God just connecting the, connecting the dots for you so that you can be his witness and that we can use the time that he gives us that opportunity to glorify him. Amen?
Let me pray for you guys. Father, I thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you for your goodness, for your faithfulness, Father. Father, I pray for those that are in here. I ask that you be with them, Father. Give them words that, that, that glorify you, Father. Give them those, those opportunities. Give them the time that you have given us. Not that we walk in, in unwise in that time, but that we use wisdom to glorify you. And if we feel like we are lost, if we feel like we have no purpose, if we feel like we don't know where to start, that they start spending time with you because that is the best place to be, Father. Father, I pray for the households that are represented in here today, that they, that they are uh, covered, Father, that they are, um, your presence is known in that home, Father God, that they take the time to, to, to love and to pray over different areas of their home, Father, but most importantly, Father, those marriages that exist in those homes, that they glorify you, Father, those relationships that are built in these homes, Father, that they glorify you, Father. Help us walk in a way that we are united so that we can fulfill the scriptures the way Jesus has said that, that when we love one another, that people will know that we belong to you, Father. Father, even in the middle of our mess, Father, even in the middle of our mess, that we run to you so that we continue to stay in your will. Father, may you be glorified. Father, we love you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask all these things. Amen.